Yes, yes, y'all. Welcome back to another episode of the Cliff Notes Podcast. I appreciate you checking it out for real, for real. Had an opportunity to sit and chop it up with a friend of mine, an artist who's been real busy recently. She released a joint called The Thesis, featuring a slew of Portland hip-hop artists, Versatile, Immaculate, Kayla J, Dame Lillard, a.k.a. Dame Dollar. She also released a joint with J.I.D. Before all of that, we had a chance to chop it up and talk about what's coming next from the artist based out of Portland, Oregon. She goes by the name of Wynn. On this episode, the Cliff Notes Podcast. Support for the Cliff Notes Podcast comes from Acapella Apparel, an idea born from a love of hip-hop, funk, and soul music and its surrounding cultures. With fashion being a huge visual part of the cultures, they've created expressive images to pay homage, invoke nostalgia, and showcase the elements that make up the lifestyle and cultures of these genres. Acapella, apparel for the music lifestyle. For more information, check out acapella.com. That's A-K-E-P-E-L-E dot com. Ladies and gentlemen, the show you're about to listen to may contain explicit content. So guess what? You need to put them babies to sleep. This is for grown folks only. So we're not held liable for anything you might be offended by. Thank you for listening. Yes, 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 y'all. Welcome back to another episode of the Cliff Notes Podcast. Available everywhere you listen to your podcasts, including Apple Podcasts, Spotify, Google Podcasts, and of course at Cliff Notes. Dot com. Appreciate y'all downloading, checking in. You know what I mean? I got a really good one for you. I keep saying I got to stop saying that because they're all good, but I'm just like, I'm super psyched to have an opportunity to have this conversation because it's it's really cool. It's with one of my favorite people, let alone favorite artists. And it's been a minute since we had a chance to sit and chop it like this. So I'm um, just really grateful for the opportunity because she's a little busy right now. But um, yo, let them, let them know who you are. What an introduction. What's good? This is Wynn up here on Cliff Notes. <laughs> but well-deserved, though, you know what I mean? Hey, thank you. It's mutual. Appreciate it, man. Appreciate it. How are you? I'm doing great. I'm, uh, I'm like you said, I'm a little busy, but busy is a blessing, so mm. I'm doing well. Mm. Mm-hmm. Man, um, so, much, so much to talk about because so much has happened since the last time. Um, we had a chance to to, to talk like this. I, it's funny when I have an opportunity to have people come back on the podcast. It's always cool mm-hmm. to go back and look and see like when was the last time we did this. You know, and yeah, definitely. I think I think it's been at least three years. So I think it has been too. In uh in three years, a couple things have changed for you, man. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, things have changed for sure. Um, I'm trying to, I'm trying to multitask. I'm looking right now to see if I can see, uh, when we did this, but at any rate, you were, you were finishing up, it was July of 2017. So it's been a couple of years. Wow. Yeah. Um, yeah. So right after that happened was my, was the viral moment with world star. <laughs> so that was, that was kind of right before everything started the shift. Um, the, the, let's start with that, man, the world star situation. How did that, like, how did that all happen? I, you know, I, I couldn't tell you the year, the year before that I, I posted a video, um, on Twitter that went viral and, um, I'd had kind of a a rough summer of 2017. I spent a long time, um, with my engineer and and right hand, Itai, we were working on a little five track EP that will never reached the waves, but we, uh, we thought, it, we thought it was great. And we sent it out to a couple of people who we built relationships with and thought they were going to be blown away and none of them were. So mm. we were like, all right, we got to go back to square one. So I ended up writing a freestyle to kind of celebrate the one year of going viral the first time. And, um, I sent it to Ty and I was like, yo, like, I don't think I'm going to post this. I don't think it's very good. And he was like, yo, you need to post this. I'm telling you, it's going to go viral. And I was like, no, it's not going to go viral. So I put it up on my Twitter. It gets like, I don't know, like 100, 200 likes, retweets. And I was going to wait a day or two to post it on Instagram so it could have a little lifespan. Mm -hmm. And I was like, "Ah, it's not doing well. I'm just going to put it on Instagram. I put it on Instagram after like 30, 45 minutes. 
and someone tags world star and maybe five or 10 minutes later, I have a DM from them that says, Hey, we'd love to post your video. <laughs> and I said, go ahead. Just please tag me. Please tag me in the comment. And they were like, yep, we got you. So they went ahead and, and posted that video. And I remember calling Ty cause he was in Eugene and I was in Portland and I was calling him like, yo, you're not going to believe this. I just got 5,000 new followers. I call him again. <laughs> I've got 10,000 new followers. I call him again. I've got 20,000 new followers. I woke up the next day. I had 60,000 more followers. That's ridiculous. It yo. was insane. Yeah, it was insane. But I was dealing with like the, the following days were just like my, my kind of like manager consultant at the time was in Mexico with his wife and my family was like in a different country and Ty was in Eugene. I'm like sitting by myself in Portland. Like how am I, I'm like going through 300 emails a day, just like responding to people. It was insane. But when that's gotta be, it's gotta be such a, such a crazy thing. Like the whole, the whole going mm -hmm. viral, like you said, you, it, you, you've yeah. done it a year before. So at least you kind of had, had that experience, but yes. I mean, it's gotta feel crazy that you're, like you're doing what you do and mm -hmm. and people respond the way that they do in terms of like continuing to share and comment and this that and the third like yeah how do you like how do you keep your head when something like that happens i'm really glad you brought up that that was kind of my second time the first time it happened it was it was like a roller coaster because sometimes you're hyped and other times you're like damn you know mm. i'm getting all this attention and people looking at me people don't who don't even know me have an opinion mm. Um, and something that I think made it a little bit easier, even after having that experience and knowing to just like, I don't need to read through everything. I don't need to, I don't need to go through all of that was, um, shockingly, it was like 97% really positive. Wow. And that I think kind of inspired me to, to keep doing what I was doing because, um, you know, you always get nervous. I'm like, we live in a cancel culture and I'm like the easiest person to cancel. <laughs> so I, I was, always, I was always, I was always nervous that if I was going to go viral, it was going to be on some, like, this is what happens when you listen to too much schoolboy and you live in the suburbs. <laughs> but, um, everybody, people could, could, they could tell that I had, that I'd really dedicated myself to, to figuring out the craft. And, um, and that was actually really inspiring. So it was cool. Well, and when, yeah. when you, in, in in interviews that you do and um any any anybody who has had an opportunity to sit and talk with you that's that's something that you share is that mm -hmm. this is something that you have studied and it mm -hmm. does it feel um i don't know the right word like do you does it feel accomplished or um you know when people recognize that you do put in the work that you're not like you're not doing this to go viral. You're doing this because you're an artist. Like, do you feel any sense of yeah. satisfaction when people recognize that? Definitely. I mean, that's, that's kind of the Holy grail, you know, because I think when you make music, all you really want to do is like, is be understood mm. and have people kind of share your experiences and for, for people to relate to the amount of hours that I put in, you know, they say you have to put in 10,000 hours to master something and, I can, I haven't mastered anything yet. I don't think I ever will, but I've definitely put in my 10,000. So when somebody can reach out to me and say, Hey, like, you know, I've been doing this for four years. And when I listen to your music, it makes me want to, makes me want to get back into, into writing and it challenges me. It makes me think about something different. So anytime that, you know, you connect with artists who are also fans, um, who can really acknowledge that it's a, it's a dedicated thing. It's a lifestyle. It, it definitely means a lot. No doubt, no doubt, man. Um, you you have you've released a couple of singles since since mm -hmm. we last talked, and mm -hmm. um, you know a after releasing those singles, there's been this this sort of buzz of okay, you know, when are we getting the next one? When are, when are we getting the next one? Is there any pressure mm -hmm. that that is associated with that when you know when people recognize who you are and they just they mm -hmm. constantly want more? Do you feel pressure to to, to quickly put more information out because that's kind of the age that we live in you know where people yeah. are constantly you know just putting out the next thing that, to hold people's attention yeah and i i'm a strong believer that that you train people mm -hmm. um i think that if i i feed people frequently they're going to expect that forever mm -hmm. and i've never been that kind of artist i came up in an age where 
like I grew up listening to Kendrick Lamar and Kendrick takes two or three out years between albums. Yeah. And so I, I learned that patience. I was like, all right, I'm not going to expect anything from Kendrick for another year, another two years. And so it's hard now because people have such short attention spans. They want things thrown out quickly. Like I put out the thesis the other day. I have people hitting me now, like, when's the next thing coming out? <laughs> and I just, I really take my time. I'm a perfectionist. If you talk to anyone on my team, they've all been, I've been the patient one, which usually it's the, it's the team going slow down and the artist is like, let's just put it out. Mm -hmm. And I, uh, I really like to take my time and make sure everything is right. So when I'm, when I'm ready to put my foot on the gas, then I'm, then I'm ready. And I have a couple things lined up and, and then it's time to go, but you definitely feel pressure, but I think you and your fans kind of developing a relationship between timelines mm -hmm. is important. Mm -hmm. I don't want to give them the expectation that I'm just going to give them things whenever I have them because I don't want to put out anything that I think is is subpar or rushed. It's, it, and it's cool. I'm an old head, and so that's that's sort of what what I expect is. Well, I shouldn't say what I expect, but that's what I remember is your an artist that you dig would put something out, and oftentimes it would just be a single, and you'd have to wait, you know, like ride with the mm -hmm. single for a minute and wait for the for the full length to come out, and the full length would come out. And you'd have an opportunity to sit with that and really, um, you know, really experience the project and read the liner notes and get uh -huh. to know, you know, who the producers were and this, that and the third. And we don't really get uh -huh. to do that now. So I so appreciate that that idea of like like you heard it, but now like really go listen to it because there's especially an artist like yeah. yourself, like there's there's something behind it. And that's that's a, a great point. And I think it really goes hand in hand with the. Um, with the, the direction that music has gone, I think there's in the last uh, in the last couple of years there's been kind of a lack of focus on lyricism and that kind of is resurfacing again. Mm -hmm. And I think um, when you're turning things around so fast, you don't have time to sit there and really study the lyrics or take your time to craft a story or or wordplay that's going to blow people's minds. That I grew up listening to Lupe and Eminem and Nas and Jay Z. So, like, my favorite thing is I get a song and I can live with that song for months because I'm still finding things out in the lyrics that I didn't even realize. Even five years later, I'm catching things I didn't hear the first time. So, that's the kind of music that I want to give to my fans. And I think there's other artists these days, like Tierra Whack and like Jid, that are doing the same thing and, and really putting an emphasis back on their lyrics and not wanting to overfeed and really letting people sit and soak in kind of the artistry that they put into it. That's what's up, man. Chopping up with the homie win. So, um, again, you, you mentioned it. I'm going to come back to it in a minute, but talking about mm -hmm. some of the other singles that you put out. So you dropped, last mm -hmm. year you dropped the single Buzzer. And mm -hmm. when uh, you dropped the single and you dropped the visuals and mm -hmm. people were kind of, people were kind of taken aback when they saw that be in part because of the cameo that was in the video. Like, how did that all happen? Mm -hmm. Yeah. I, uh, Bane had, Bane had found me, I believe after my first or second viral video and, and followed me. And we had, we had chatted a couple of times and like, yo, we need to work at some point. We need to work. And I had written a song and I shouted him out in the last four bars. Mm -hmm. And this was kind of to buzzer. The point of buzzer was to get people's attention again and be like, this is, you know, this is what we want to do. And I was like, man, like I should just, I should hit him and I should see if he's down to pop into this. And he's such a supporter of the local scene and just of the city of Portland in general. And I don't think anybody represents loyalty as much as he does mm -hmm. um, to the city. So I hit him up and I was like, Hey, I shouted you out in, in this song and I'd love to send it to you and hear what you think. And if you're down, we're going to be shooting a music video for it. And I'd love to have you be a part of it. And he was like, absolutely. I got you. <laughs> and it was like, we shot it. <laughs> we shot it in like the parking lot of Skyline restaurant, which is like up in the hills. And, um, and he pulled up and was so nice and helped us move props because it's, like, it's just me and Ty and, Tim Sue shot the video, so me, Ty, and Tim are moving props and things. <laughs> and Dan pulls up with a couple of his friends, and they help us move things. Like it was really cool. He hung out for a couple hours, and we got some shots, and it really meant a lot to us to have him a part of that. That's what's up, man. So, sort of a sort of a an off question, I guess. 
we, we, uh, many times when we talk and, and it may be a part of it just may be the information that 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 you share with um you know with the world but you speak mm-hmm. so often of the support that you've gotten since you mm-hmm. started making music like since you started putting putting your art out like so often you talk about Mm -hmm. the opportunities that you've had and 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 I mean separate from you know we've had the conversation of of privilege I don't mean that I mean like Mm -hmm. like stories like you just shared is has Mm -hmm. that really been the way that it's been completely for you because I never hear you really talk about obstacles that you've had you know through so far yeah I yeah I think it's always a balance um I've you know, I feel like you you keep people around you that you want to be like, mm-hmm. and I've I've really tried my best to keep the best people around me and and not engage in any kind of negative energy. I'm a I'm a very simple person. <laughs> I like to be in the studio. I like to write music. I like to finalize mixes, and and that's my thing. And so I've I've never really engaged in a very much drama. I try to do my best to to support other people, and and they've been nice enough to give that back to me in return and so I I hope that I can continue that relationship with the scene but um there's of course obstacles and everything I mean when I was growing up before I had kind of the attention that I have now Mm -hmm. it was like you know you grow up in like Oswego and you say you're a rapper and people like they bully you you know (laughs) like it's it's not it's not like a it's not like a happy upbringing Mm -hmm. I actually got a DM from Rambo Rich the other day. He was like, I was working with this with this kid in LO on a job and it came up that you guys went to high school together and he was like, Yeah, she was the the girl with the mean mug and the beats headphones on, just writing raps in the hallway. And like that that was my reality. Like I didn't I wasn't I wasn't I I didn't I didn't fuck with people. Yeah. Like I didn't like the energy in my school and I didn't I didn't consider myself to be really like any of them I just kind of isolated myself I think that's what drew me to hip-hop so mm-hmm. it's been cool to, to kind of break out of that I feel like a lot of people get tormented throughout high school and middle, middle school for yeah. just being who they are and I was that's what I was I was unapologetically myself and that didn't click with the people of Lake Oswego so it, it was cool to to break into the Portland scene and meet a lot of people who shared the same passions and, and shared the same goals and since then it's it's definitely been nicer, but yeah, you know, yeah. there's always obstacles. No doubt, no doubt. It's and it's funny that it's funny you shared that way. I, I had this I had this statement written down that I was gonna ask you about. Just watching mm-hmm. watching the way that you move, whenever I see you, you typically have uh, familiar faces around you. And mm-hmm. uh Ta- mm-hmm. Tati Anagita, who um had Yanagita Projects, had this um mm-hmm. clothing company, he had a hat that said audit your circle. And Mm -hmm. like, I really resonated with that because I do believe the people that you associate with have a a profound impact on you as an individual. And so it's cool to hear you, you know, to hear you describe it that way, because what what you're saying is is just what I've witnessed. So, you know, you're Mm -hmm. definitely a woman of your words, which I think is cool. Thank you. Yeah, it's rare that you'll ever see me without like Ty or Raph or mommy on my management team around me I've, I've i very much keep the people i'm close to close to me at all times um and i'm i'm really just a reflection of them they're like the the best people so it just you know it makes me feel comfortable makes me feel they make me a lot better so um, i think it's important to always keep those people close no doubt no doubt okay so let's let's dive in because you brought it up now so on september the 6th you dropped mm-hmm. the thesis which I did. <laughs> yeah. So so look so so like to give people a peek behind the curtain, man. Let me just publicly say thank you for for giving me the sneak peek because I had an opportunity to check some <laughs> stuff prior to that yeah. being released and uh, was mm-hmm. so excited uh, to hear the concept behind that song. Um, mm-hmm. But I'm not sure how much you've you've let people know about how it came together. The visuals are out. You can check it out. Mm-hmm. It's the thesis by Win. You can check it out on on YouTube and like li- mm-hmm. literally everywhere now. Um, mm-hmm. But it features it features some some pretty significant people in Portland hip hop. And anybody who yeah. listens to this podcast, um, definitely familiar names. But um, Talk about talk about where the idea came from of creating this song 
and then how you, you know, mm-hmm. sort of went through the process of picking people who you wanted to be on it. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So we, uh, when we first had the idea to start working on this project, it was important to us and kind of always in the forefront of me and me and Ty are really kind of the, the masterminds behind what goes into the music. And mm-hmm. we always had this thing in our brains that was like, what can we do to, to kind of put on the city that's, that's really put on for us and then supported us for so long. And, um, that kind of manifested into this cypher record. Um, and when we first thought of it, it was like, okay, let's, it seemed like a lofty goal. It was like, let's, let's gather a couple people who maybe haven't worked together before. Let's get in with theory. Let's try to make a beat for it. And that's where it really started. We had, we had theory come in and he made a couple of beats in floor nine and the one that we ended up picking he made i think in about an hour (laughs) he used a samurai sample Mm -hmm. and uh i had that beat for a little while and then i started hitting up people um and i'd hit dane i think before i hit anybody else because before i hit anybody else i wanted to be able to to pitch what i wanted to do Mm -hmm. and dane was like yep i got you like i'm in the middle of basketball season but we'll make it work and when we were deciding who else should be on the record, it was kind of like, okay, I think um, kind of, I think as I mentioned to you before in the studio, something that's, that's cool about the, the position I'm in coming from Lake Oswego into Portland was I didn't have a click. I didn't have a, a group of people that I ran with or grew up with in the scene. So I've kind of just done my best to, to be friendly to everybody and build a relationship with everybody. And that allowed me to, to combine some some really cool styles and generations and, and neighborhoods from the city and versatile to me was a given because <laughs> I'm, I'm just a massive fan of his. And I think he has the illest bars in the scene. Yeah. Um, and I knew from the jump when I was talking to theory about making the beat that I wanted the beat to feel like an experience and not just like a cypher. So I wanted to have a couple change ups and I really wanted verse to start without any drums. Mm-hmm. So we worked on that and and I'm also I mean I'm a massive fan of everybody on the record Ilmac and and Kayla it was kind of just like you know Ilmac's a legend mm-hmm. and he's put on for a massive amount of battle rappers and right. four St. John's and I mean I Ty had been watching Ilmac's battle since he was a kid and had these crazy stories of Ilmac like coming outside of his high school and had freaking out so <laughs> It was, and I grew up watching Ilmax battles and his team backpack ciphers. And with Kayla, it was like, it, it's so dope to see another woman my age who's dealing with way more obstacles than I'm going to have to deal with, really like pushing through this shit and making it happen in Portland and making so much noise mm-hmm. that um, it was like, yo, what if we put all of these people on one record? <laughs> And we hit everybody and everybody was like, hell yeah, let's do it. And we had Verse and Kayla come in and lay their bars and Ilmac and Dane sent theirs in. And it was a, it was a, it was a blessing, honestly. <laughs> it was probably, it's probably one of the things we're most proud of making. Yeah. And the, this story is my favorite story to tell was I was, I was nervous because the Blazers were like deep in the thick of the playoff and I hit Dane um after their first round it was like yeah i just wanted to check in like i just wanted to let you know like no pressure and he was like he's like i still got you i'm just like in the middle of this i was like absolutely <laughs> so we waited a while kind of and busy right now up, when you know this yeah, whole this whole busy. basketball thing <laughs> <laughs> kind of just making thunder rethink their entire roster and <laughs> And so I, I just kind of let it go, and I was like, let's just think about what else we can do, because he's trying to put the city on his back. <laughs> and without even reminding him, I texted him the day they announced his max contract and mm. was just like, yo, congratulations. That's legendary, and, you know, that you're you're a legend for this. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. And he responds, hey, thanks. Did you get the record? I just sent it over. <laughs> I was like, are you kidding me? That's what you were doing today? Wow. Wow. So it was a, it was really special. It, it took a long time to, to pull it together, but it was completely worth it. No doubt. But and it's funny though, man, yeah. because I think that that story does speak to what you mentioned earlier, just sort of the kind of guy that he is. So to have him as mm-hmm. a part of this project, I mean it makes it that much cooler, really. Yeah, I mean it was 
it was hard to imagine what it would be like without having him on there as like a a, a stamp for the city, just just for the local scene to see Dane show out for us yeah. is like really sick. So yeah. I have a lot of love for him. And it's you know so so from my perspective, being someone who curates the scene here, I I hope that I hope people continue to to dive into the record because and I know that you realize this just because I, I know you, but I hope people realize that you've got, um, you have so much covered on one song. You have Portland yeah. hip hop history with Versatile. You have a battle rap champion with Ilmac. You have an up and coming artist in Kayla J and you have this person who represents Portland as an athlete, but also as a musician. And then yourself, I mean, there's so much that's a part of just the roster, let alone the song mm-hmm. itself. I mean, I hope people really, you know, hope it really resonates with people. Have you gotten feedback to that effect yet? Yeah, it's it's been really cool. Mm-hmm. It's been really cool seeing people's reactions and and how excited they are, and it it feels it feels like the biggest honor of my career thus far mm-hmm. to be able to to put a little bit of a light on where I can mm-hmm. um, to the people who I really think deserve it and bring that kind of attention back to the city. Um, and that's kind of like going forward with shows that we do and collabs that happen. I really want to just bring the light back. Like when we when we got the Fader article back for uh, <laughs> the premiere of it, right. and it talked about Mac. Like we got to yeah. put Mac Smith's name in there. Like, yeah. think. like that's that's what we want to do. We yeah. want to we want to bring the attention to the people who are putting on for the city because. Portland's bubbling and there's so much happening and like I just if I can if I can have a small part and in helping it grow and flourish then then I definitely want to do my part that's what's up man that's what's up such a I mean and that's why that's why I celebrate um what you do so much man I I I try to I try to tell Mm -hmm. folk about you you know in my nine to five as much as I can it's funny I shared uh, a link to the thesis video with one of my coworkers, and she hit me back and, and she was like, yep. And I shared it with everybody in my circle. So, you know, <laughs> continuing to Thank just to, to sort of broaden that reach, I think is, I think is really cool. Um, Thank you for doing that. I want to, I want to go, go back a little bit. We were talking about mm-hmm. things about you going viral and you've yeah. actually had an opportunity to, to, as you mentioned, go viral a couple times. One of the things mm-hmm. that was really cool for me to see was when the video for your verse that you did at the Mike Check Team Backpack event dropped. Mm-hmm. Um, mm-hmm. There were there was there was a little bit of a mistaken identity situation happening. <laughs> <laughs> Yo, <laughs> that was so weird. <laughs> That was like the weirdest thing that's ever happened to me. <laughs> I woke up one day uh-huh. and someone had sent it to me over Instagram mm-hmm. and I opened it and it had like 10,000 views or something. <laughs> I was like, oh, like it's not going to, you know, this is fine. It's whatever. Right. And then another person sent it to me from a different account and it had like 20,000 <laughs> views. And I was like, okay, well, this is getting weird. Right. Right. And then more people started sending it and then it was all over my Facebook and then it was on my Twitter and then mm-hmm. it was on my, and it was just like, yo, I had people hitting me up like, yo, this was genius marketing. What, <laughs> how'd you do this? I was like, I didn't do this. Right. But wait, 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 wait. So if people don't know, let them know, let them know what you were being said. Let them know what happened. Everyone started to decide that I was Eminem's daughter, Haley <laughs> Mathers. <laughs> Which is how, which is hilarious yeah. and equally like maybe one of the most frustrating weeks of my life. <laughs> because <laughs> you you have to understand like I like okay, so already when you're when you're a white rapper, mm-hmm. you you're only ever compared to Eminem. Right. And right. when you're a when you're a woman, you're always kind of under the shadow of what men are doing in hip hop. Mm-hmm. And so to be, to have that combination, and now I'm the daughter of Eminem, <laughs> is just like the ultimate, like, this is your place, Haley. Right. Stay right here. Right, right, So right. it was, 
we were trying to get control of it and, and, and try to shift things. We sent out a couple of press releases to people to be like, please. And, and my fans actually did a really good job of yeah. tagging me and everything. And I was able to respond to tweets that got um, a couple thousand likes on things. I ended up getting like 20,000 followers on Instagram, for mm-hmm. it, which is pretty insane. Right. Um, right. But it was just like a normal Saturday morning in December. I was probably wearing some Christmas pajamas. <laughs> Woke up and now I'm related to Eminem. It's, it was super weird. It's so it's so funny though, man. How how things can can create sort of catch a life of their own and become a reality yeah. because it went it truly went from you know people on social media saying this to like publications were coming out and saying yeah you know what I mean and it came it came back to me in my real life. I had people, I had like like famous artists. <laughs> texting the video to my team being like, yo, have you seen this Eminem's daughter thing? <laughs> and now those artists think that I'm Eminem's daughter. And my team had to respond and be like, no, no, no. Like, actually, I work with her and her name is Wynn. Right. She's from Portland. <laughs> That's so it has lurked over crazy. my life. And it keeps coming up again. I get even two weeks ago, it, it got back up on Snapchat yeah. and people started posting it and tagging me in that. It's yeah. insane. Oh, weird. But you, but you, I mean, you, you realize that this is going to be, I mean, this is, I mean, even once people know this is going to be a part of, you know, your, your, your career. Oh, yeah. And it's so funny. It's so like, of course, like, yeah. It's, you know, for me, again, knowing you, and I think if we go back and listen to the first interview that we did for Cliff Notes, I mean, you mentioned how Eminem Mm -hmm. was an artist that you studied. So for uh-huh. me, when I saw that come out, I thought, man, isn't that apropos that, you know, uh-huh. this is this is this is something that goes viral that people yeah. associate her with. Him. But it could be yeah. worse. You know what I'm saying? They could have associated you with with some crab rapper, I guess. Yeah, I mean, they could have called me Iggy's sister or something. <laughs> they, could have, they could have done that. Too true. Absolutely too <laughs> true. Um, so another thing that I wanted to talk about, man, kind of staying on the thesis just for a bit longer, um, Mm -hmm. the, the visuals came out really, really cool. Whose idea was it to to do the visuals that way? Um, it was my idea and I knew that Riley was going to be the person to take that to the next level and be able to execute it. So, um, when we, when we decided that we wanted to start off the releases of the singles with the thesis Mm -hmm. and, and shoot a video for it. We were nervous because we were like, you know, Ilmac lives in L.A. now and Dane just filmed Space Jam and put out his album. He's going into the season. And we were like, I don't know how we're going to pull this off. But I called Riley and he was more down than I could even explain. And just from the start was dedicated to to making sure that the vision was executed properly. Nice. Nice. I'm sure he won't mind me sharing this. Uh, I was talking to him. Um, a couple weeks ago, and he was telling me, and you may have even mentioned this, but he was telling me how it was really up until the last, you know, the last moment that you guys were still in the editing process and how mm-hmm. it was something that you were very involved with. Um, yeah. Once, once the video was done, once you saw the finished product, do you feel like mm-hmm. what was in your head is what we now get to see? Absolutely. I mean, what, what you guys get to see is is beyond what I could have imagined. Like to be able to get, I mean, that, cause that was a dream. When we started thinking of the idea of making the song, it was like, how are we going to be able to execute this? And it took, you know, it took eight months to, to figure everything out and, and get the video into action. But the fact that it went from an idea that Ty and I had in December of last year to fast forward the end of July and the Portland hip hop scene is united in the middle of a shutdown pioneer square with Ilmac and verse Kayla Dame and I like free, like doing our cypher shit. It was like, I don't even, I couldn't tell you how it happened. It feels like it just was a dream. And you know, the, the response to the response to all of that has, has been so positive. I mean, people have, have talked about how, how huge this is for Portland that people haven't seen something like this in Portland hip hop in so long. And again, yeah. when big ups to you, man, for, for being so inclusive beyond, beyond the MCs for reaching out to the Portland hip hop community as a whole and inviting people to be a part of that. 
Um, and, you know, things that are so mm-hmm. cool. I saw someone note, you know, someone recognized Cool Nuts in the video and, you know, mm-hmm. noted the mayor of Portland hip hop is there approving. Somebody mm-hmm. recognized Young Shirt Man from his nine to five in the mm-hmm. video. You know, those sorts of things. These are great mm-hmm. stories. And I think they go a long way in showing um, the, 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 the area outside of the Northwest, how, you know, how united right. the, the, the scene is right now. I think that's really cool. Yeah, and I, I really wanted the I really wanted people to feel like they could be proud of this video and like this was their city and that you know I I've reached out to as many people as I could to get them as a part of the video because I wanted people to feel like this was really a product of what the community had created. Yeah, yeah, that's what's up. Well, I, and I I think you I think you were I think you were successful in doing that, man. That's so cool. Thank so, you. Thank so, you. You 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 just mentioned it. You said when you guys decided to release this thesis as the first of the singles, then that means that you have mm-hmm. some things planned. When mm-hmm. what's up with that? Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. When does this podcast drop? <laughs> um, this will not. This actually won't drop for a minute. It'll probably be uh, middle of October. Okay, cool. So that's great timing because my project will come out in the middle of October. Ooh, look at that. And we have <laughs> we have a single dropping this coming Friday. It's called Handle It. Okay. And uh, we're uh, it's not going to have a visual with it yet, mm-hmm. but it's produced by a great guy named DK the Punisher. Okay. Um, he he works a lot with Sir from TDE. He's a he's an incredible talent, and I'm super excited about this one. I'm going to announce it um, in the coming days at the top of this coming week, and then. In early October, we'll have another single called Ego Check, and then the project will drop about two weeks later on nice. October 18th. Nice. Yeah, so we're in the final. We're turning in the assets for the project, which means the, the masters, the artwork, everything. Yeah. Next, well, I, this, I mean, we're Thursday. Thursday, we got to turn them in. Today's Saturday, so. That's crazy. We're, uh, we're in the thick of it, for sure. <laughs> so, yeah. um like things of uh and i i i'm sure if 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 you don't i mean i can i can always edit this out but things have mm-hmm. uh in your personal life have lined up great because you just graduated from college mm-hmm. uh university mm-hmm. of oregon go ducks yeah go ducks um and so like everything is lining up pretty nicely now because you're in a place where you got your education you got that paper mm-hmm. and you can mm-hmm. really put efforts into moving forward, forward with your career now. And it seems yeah. like it's, I mean, everything, the timing is perfect. Yeah. We, uh, you know, something that I'm forever grateful for is the team that I have was very consistent in their support for me finishing school. Mm-hmm. And cause my, the, the first person who I'm grateful to call a team member who, who ever found me was my freshman year. Um, at the the start of my winter term in January, found me up a YouTube video I put out called Genesis. Mm-hmm. And from the jump, he was like, where are you? Where are you at? And I was like, I'm in school. And the more we had conversations, I was like, maybe I should leave. Maybe I should. Uh, and mm-hmm. he was always like, no, like you, you should stay here and finish. And I eventually came, came around pretty quickly to, yeah, you're right. I need to stay here. I need to finish. Yeah. I mean, none of the none of the things that I gained, I could ever replace. I could ever, yeah. like, I, I I had the best college experience between, like, I played in a band called the Ill Eclipse that was like a 12 piece hip hop band. Mm-hmm. It was it was like the roots. We had three MCs and then we had horns, and strings, and drums, everything. And uh, we played house shows around. That's where I really learned how to freestyle and perform live and. We were, at the same time, I was living this, like, Hannah Montana life. I'm going down to L.A. with Ty, and <laughs> and we're going to parties that we never thought we'd be at. And then we come back the next day, and I'm taking my midterm, and I'm playing a house show. And it was like, I learned a lot. Yeah. I learned a lot about who I was. I really came into my own. And so I'm, I'm grateful that my team was patient in allowing me to finish and and being supportive of that the entire time to the point that, um, by the time I graduated, I had assembled the the whole team that I needed between managers and agents and publishers and everyone. And now that I've graduated, we're all ready to to go through the green light. So that's, that's where we're at. 
That's what's up, man. Um, people have made note of seeing you around um, outside of the Northwest. As you mentioned, you spent some time down in L.A. Um, I've seen people mm-hmm. talk about seeing you in New York. I know that um, you mm-hmm. had a chance to go down to South by Southwest and, and do some work yeah. down there. Um, mm-hmm. Outside of what we talked about, you know, the things that you've experienced here, here in the Northwest, what's been the highlight mm-hmm. of your career so far that that individual that maybe you had that you that you've been a fan of that you've had an opportunity to connect with or maybe just a connection that that has grown out of not even necessarily your your current level of fame, but just the opportunity mm-hmm. to be outside of the Northwest. Man, I mean, so much. So many people have have embraced me down here in LA, and we don't we don't live here yet. We go kind of go back pretty frequently. I'd say every every two or three weeks or so for a couple of weeks. And um, our my whole team lives down here, and. I've all, a lot of the producers I work with are down here and every single one of them has embraced me and, and been an incredible um, part of me kind of developing into the artist that people are about to see when we put out this project. Mm-hmm. I don't know that I can pinpoint like a, there's, there's my guy, Sam Taylor mm-hmm. and Sam Taylor works at uh, the publishing company that I'm at called Cobalt. And Sam has been instrumental in, in helping us create this project and in really just being like like a family member. Like he, I'm, I'm grateful to have team members that fly up for my graduation and, and get to meet my family. And he's really helped guide us through this process and connected us with, with more people who've been, been instrumental. I think one of the most powerful sessions I had during the making of this project was um, with someone who might be my favorite producer of all time, Soundwave Mm -hmm. um, from TDE. And um, Sam connected us and we had a a great session in LA where I I felt like when I was writing the song that I wrote, I like, it was like a spiritual experience. I felt like I had like transformed into a different person because before that session, I I didn't really write in the room. I prefer to write by myself usually. And I was like, man, I like, I gotta, I gotta be present. I gotta be here because I, I really wanna, I really wanna blow sound wave away. And I think I wrote some of the best verses I've ever written in that room. And we laid the hook down, and it gave me the concept for what eventually my, my first album will be, and gave us the intro to this project. And that session really kind of changed the way that I approached my, the sessions I had following that one. And Soundwave is just he's an incredible musician so I'm really grateful for that experience and for Sam and I mean I could I could list so many people that's so many up. that's what's up man um yeah. I again thank you for giving me the opportunity to have a peek behind the curtain of some of the some of the work that you have been creating I'm excited mm-hmm. for people to hear because um you know we've gotten to see a bit of um, of what you can do artistically, but I think that people mm-hmm. are going to be really blown away by the depth of your art when you release this project. Is that mm-hmm. something that you Thank that you. you think about going in, or are you just creating? I just created. Um, I think I've I've really changed a lot in the last couple of years between just everything that's happened between my my personal life and my professional life mm-hmm. and that's really affected the art that I've made. I've, I've pushed myself outside of a lot of boundaries and made myself uncomfortable. I think it's resulted in, in better music. Um, I've let myself experience things instead of kind of, I'm, I know myself best for shutting myself away and working on my own music mm-hmm. and allowing myself to go out and experience things really like helps. So I don't know that I was like consciously creating things to shift opinions but I was consciously doing things to shift my own opinion of myself which I think is reflected in the music Mm, yeah yeah that's so deep that's 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 so deep um Mm -hmm. I want to when you and I had a chance to to really sit and talk for the first time one of the things Mm -hmm. that I was really taken aback by was um your your thoughtfulness of um, just how you move and your perspective on life. And I would be remiss if I didn't celebrate with you. We talked we talked about it, but to really recognize the fact that you um, 
you're on this trajectory with your art. You had the uh, the attention of the masses because you had a number of things go viral. Um, you had people, at least locally, and I think even outside of the local scene, really supporting uh, you and what you were doing. And you could have taken that moment to, to, to step off. And you've already spoken about uh, making the decision and being supported in the decision to, to finish your education. And I, I think that oftentimes people look at, um, look at it as an either or. And I think what you've done is, is you've, you've again created another example of the fact that people can do both. And yeah. I think that that should be celebrated because whether it's in arts or whether it's in entertainment and, and, and athletics, um, I don't think that people realize that you can do both. So I, I, I want to mm-hmm. publicly celebrate that because I think mm-hmm. um, showing people that you can that you can have it all if you're willing to put forth the hard work. And I know that it I know mm-hmm. that it must have been a ton of hard work to get all that done. Well, thank you for saying that. Yeah, it was. It was definitely a lot of hard work, a lot of patience. There was there was weeks where I was driving back and forth every day between Eugene and Portland to, to finish up the project and to, to make my class that took attendance, which killed me. <laughs> um, but, I, but I did it. And I, I think it's because I, I mean, aside from the, the selfish reasons of just wanting to be with my friends and, and wanting to kind of have the best of both worlds was kind of noticing the patterns of thought I had when I was younger mm-hmm. about school. Like I, I never really, I saw myself going to college because that's all I've ever known in my family. It was like, you just, you have to go. Mm-hmm. And really up until like the month before I went to school, where I was like telling my parents, I'm not going, <laughs> I was always under the impression I was going to go, mm-hmm. but it was, it was hard because not, not a lot of my idols did. Yeah. And like there's the J. Coles and the two chains that, that went to school and obviously there's more, but um, it was hard for me to be like, I need to go to school to make this happen. Right, right. Because it's it's not true. Like you don't you can't school can't teach you how to rap. It can't teach you how to be an artist. Yeah. But what it can teach you is how to is how to grow up a little bit and it, it taught me a lot of things that I that I needed. Mm-hmm. Um in order to do what I'm doing, and that was how to articulate what privilege is, and how to have uh, an open and honest conversation about that. Yeah. And that was most of my studies were, were social justice studies, and I, I needed those um, because I didn't know how to articulate it. I understood where I was coming from, and I understood why it was different, but I didn't know how to talk about it. Mm-hmm. So I think that was a, a massive step that I needed to take. And I'm, I'm glad and fortunate that I was able to see that I needed that. No doubt. No doubt. Chopping up a win. Um, the, you are, you are active on, on social media. And uh-huh. one of the, one of the cool things to watch is just how um, interactive and engaging you are. You at, <laughs> at the drop of a dime will be like, yo, ask me questions. And, and, you know, mm-hmm. people people ask you about all all sorts of things. Um, I think that your mm-hmm. your dog is definitely a part of the team because your dog is often in <laughs> in your visuals. He's such a good boy. <laughs> <laughs> um, but but in doing that, in in creating this this space to to interact with people and and let people see who you are. Um, not only as the artists that they hear on record or as, that they see in the videos um, or who they will continue to see in the videos. Um, it, I think it's cool that you're, that you're letting people see the, the person that you are. Um, have you gotten, what mm-hmm. kind of feedback have you gotten maybe from, from younger, younger women or, or men um, who, who are mm-hmm. sort of just watching the way that you move um, through mm-hmm. this, through this, you know, this, this, this whirlwind that you've been on now for a couple of years. You, you just cut out a little bit. What was that last sentence? I was saying, you know, people who have watched you move through this whirlwind over the last couple of years, what sort of feedback have you gotten on a personal level from folk who, who watch you in your personal life when you, you know, when you say, Hey, yeah. ask me questions, just that in the third. Yeah, it's been, it's been cool because a lot of, a massive amount of my fan base are, are college students. Yeah. And so, it was, <laughs> I think it was 
it was fun for me while I was in school to be able to post that. Oh, like, now I got to wake up and go to my 8 a.m. or mm-hmm. what mm-hmm. kind of bullshit homework is this? Mm-hmm. Why am I doing this? And all the time I was getting messages from people who were in high school or in college and like, damn, like, I had to do this too, but I don't have an excuse because you're <laughs> out here doing music full time and you're doing this. Right. And I have all the time, I actually have young women, like 12 or 13, message me about they've never felt like they could tell their family that they love to rap, Mm -hmm. Um, which I can, I relate to that. Mm -hmm. And so I've, I do my best to respond to the DMs when I can, especially those ones, because like, I didn't, I didn't have, I didn't have a me to to hit up on Instagram and be like, Hey, what did you do during this? So it's been cool to see the number of people that, that connect with, with what they know of my story so far. And, hopefully continue to connect with it the more that they learn. So it's been really rewarding for sure. No doubt. No doubt. Chopping up with wins. Mm-hmm. So the, the single is out now. The visuals are out mm-hmm. for the thesis mm-hmm. and um, people can definitely check that out on uh, any, any social uh, streaming platform um, it's available on iTunes you can go cop that and put some money in this young lady's pocket you know what I mean do it right mm-hmm. hey. <laughs> uh, the visuals mm-hmm. are dope um, definitely want to encourage people to continue to support so I mentioned you're active on social media if people want to try mm-hmm. to, to connect with you or just follow your journey what's the easiest most direct way to do that yeah so my Instagram is at Sina Wynn it's S-I-N-A W-Y-N-N-E and my Twitter is just at win at W Y N N E. Those are the those are the best ways. That's what's up. That's what's up, man. Um, yeah. By the time this drops, this will probably drop on the 15th, so it'll be just before, just before Ooh. the situation. You know what I'm saying? Um, excited for people to to hear what's coming and then to see mm-hmm. the response. And then you know the obvious question, like I mentioned, you know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. School is done. You got all mm-hmm. kinds of free time. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. Um, are people mm-hmm. going to be able to have an opportunity to see you do your thing live and in person? They absolutely will. Um, we're going to, we got to figure out what the, what the touring situation looks like. But my number one priority is to get this music out and then go meet the people who have been kind enough to support it and allow me to do what I do. So as soon as I have information, I'm, Sending it your way so you can blast it to the people. That's what's up. That's what's up. Mm-hmm. Well, mm-hmm. I am I am just I'm grateful for, for you taking time out, man, to jump on. I'm looking forward to um, you know, to you being back in, in the city and when you have some time to mm-hmm. come through and you know, we can sit and chop it and uh and I'm just so happy for you, man. I mean you're you're somebody mm-hmm. I continue to root for and looking forward to seeing you to, to you know, continue to win win (laughs) thank you i mean i mean you are an absolute angel sent from heaven i'm so grateful for all of your support and and for the opportunities that you've provided me within the city and and for your friendship and thank you for having me today for this this to drop (laughs) absolutely man the homie wins so once again y'all the the single is out right now the thesis go check it out by the time this drops you'll have another couple singles to check out before the the full project drops Continue to follow my homie Win wherever you you know follow your your people on social media, whether that's Instagram or Twitter, and uh, and support an artist doing good good things, man. Um, real quick, a couple of shout outs, man. I gotta say thank you to X Ray FM for their continued support of hosting the Cliff Notes podcast. Big ups to my folk at Acapella Apparel for their continued support of the Cliff Notes podcast. You can check them out at acapella.com. That's A K E P E L E dot com. And last but never, ever least, big ups to the homie, Theory Has It, for producing the official theme song for the Cliff Notes podcast. Wynn, thank you so much, man. I appreciate you to the highest, thank man. Thank you. Absolutely. Thank you. Absolutely, Back man. Back at you. Check out the Cliff Notes podcast wherever you listen to your podcast, Apple Podcasts, Spotify, Google Podcasts, or you can check it out at www.cliffnotes.com or on the X-Ray Podcast Network network at xraypod.com. You can hit me direct at cliffnotes at gmail.com. That's K-L-Y-P-H, notes, gmail, at gmail.com. All right, y'all, until we have an opportunity to do this again, y'all be blessed. Peace. Peace. Thank you.